Did you see the video where my husband made his first hybrid gel nail? Let's take a look at it and see all the things he actually did pretty good. And let's see how we can make it better. Okay, so let's get the shine off so we can get a really good look at it. I gave Caraman his first and only, <laughs> his own little set. Let's get the files out, they're noisy. His own first set of uh, easy gel. That's a hybrid gel. So let's get the shine off so we can get a really good look at it. And I'm just buffing with this soft buffer, not changing the shape. I'm just taking the shine off so we can see it a little bit easier. You know, the mistakes that he made are very, very common. We all make them. All in all, he did actually a pretty good job considering it was his first, and he has no interest. I mean, I would go over this with a student and we would focus on it together. But I thought, I was just gonna take it off and just, you know, do my next set of video nails. But then I thought, oh, maybe I should share it with you because I'm sure that you might have some questions. Maybe you've done some of these things. But Caraman doesn't really wanna sit down and me walk him through what he could do better. Do you, Caraman? You don't really wanna get into doing nails. <laughs> well, I'm pretty busy as it is. Okay, so we can, we, we've taken it off now, the shine, and we can sort of get a better look. Now this has just grown out about a week. What we are noticing right away is this is the one of the easiest things to make a mistake on. In fact, I expect students to make, if you do a nail good right off, well, never seen it happen <laughs> when I've been teaching. I've seen some students like, wow, they're pretty good. They're gonna, they got some great potential, but I've never seen someone do it good right away because we have to make these mistakes so we can get better at it. But look at this little ridge around the cuticle. Doing the cuticle is one of the hardest things to master when we're doing nails. It's such a fine, fine area. So right now we have this quite thick ledge. But one thing you didn't do, cameraman, was put it over top of the skin. And that is a common mistake. We make that because when it's wet and you're working with it, you can't really tell that it's so close to the cuticle that it might even be going over it because it all looks like one color. <laughs> I mean, they do make the colors try to look like the skin tone. That's the whole idea of the whole thing, right? So you can see that it's a little bit thick here, which again, I totally expected. And it's just not smooth enough here. But that's this part is actually pretty good. But let's turn it sideways. This really tells a story. Now this nail in no time, as soon as it started to grow it a little bit from the cuticle, growing away from the cuticle, getting a little longer on this end, the balance is going to be off. There's no balance here anyway. There's no apex. That's what we're missing. The crucial factor of the apex. We really need an apex in there, especially for this kind of length of nail. We don't, the pressure here will be so hard. Literally the nail will just grow out and then pop off like that. It'll just lift up from the back and go up or it will crack right across here because it has no strength. And then underneath, you can see there's a bit of thickness, but that's pretty expected. And that can happen regardless. But surprisingly, you did fit the form pretty good, Caraman, because otherwise that would be super, super thick. And then we're going to take a look at it this way. And you can see how thick it is and not very uniform, which again is completely to be expected. That's totally, totally normal. And you can see it's all thick on the end here as opposed to, you know, most of the thickness is over here and we need some over here. So all the mistakes that you made, Caraman, were completely expected. In fact, you didn't do them as bad as I thought you might do them because doing nails is, you know, hard. Okay, so the hardest thing is to take away the thickness. How much do you take away? Well, let's examine that. We are going to get the e-file here and we're gonna take a look at the cuticle area to see what we need to remove. Now I can see right off, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a bit thicker in here and it's also not attached. It's actually lifted. So when this grows out, this will start to lift more and more and more and it'll be a big, big ridge. So let me show you. We'll turn on the e-file here and we'll just get a look. So the first question we kind of ask ourselves is how much do you actually file away? The trick is file away anything that's discolored or lifted or lumpy and you just don't want there. So here we're gonna start with the cuticle. All this side right here is all lifted. So 
So we are going to take all of this away. See that all coming up there now? And you can see how this area is a little bit whiter. Do you see how that little bit of a white edge there? Can you see that? That kind of whitish area, anything whitish area is lifted. So we are going to get in there. Now I can do this with a hand file too, but if I do, you won't be able to see the exact area that I'm targeting because the file will cover the whole thing. And it's much easier, of course, when you're working with something like this, the e-file, because you can pinpoint that area. So see how I'm just going to file all that out? Very low speed. It's a six. That's 6,000 RPMs. And every drill is different. Mine's a very gentle drill. It's not very um, strong right out of the gate. It goes down quite low. And that's what you want, a really gentle speed. Okay, so that looks like we're getting all that lifted area there. Now we're gonna go around to the cuticle here. And I wasn't gonna say this to the cameraman when he was doing it because cuticle separation is huge, but I mean, there's so many things. There's the cuticle, there's the apex, there's the sidewall, there's the free edge, there's fitting the form on property, there's the angle of the form. And then we go into the finishing and all that. There's so many things to pay attention to. So you can't expect a person to follow every aspect of it. So I'm just going around the cuticle and I'm thinning out all of the thickness, okay? And there's something else too that is really hard to do and you can pick up on it after a while. But if you get a look at this nail, you might be able to see, and I'll maybe put some oil on it. Do you see the, un and it's very, very slight, but the unevenness of color tone, that is just, when the product is applied, it's just going on in an uneven fashion that it's, you know, you can see the different depths. The natural nail has blood in it and it looks like a pinkish hue. Then when you put the product on in an uneven way, it makes the pink come through in certain areas and it looks very patchy. Let's see if I can put some oil on it and see if we can see it a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, I see the patchiness. Yeah, there. see that? So we're going to yeah. try to eliminate that too. So what we want to focus on is taking away all the ugly, lifted, discolored parts before we put the new stuff on. So you always have to think of it too of, you don't wanna put a jacket on top of a jacket. So if you're trying on clothes, you take your jacket off to put another jacket on. That's what we wanna do here. We wanna remove the jacket where it's thick and when we don't want it, and then add some new stuff. So we gotta take away the majority of it. I'm gonna get my it's my bit kit here. Okay, I'm just gonna grab my sculpting bit. Now this is going to be able to take away the thickness on the end. You wanna turn it on a low speed, especially if you're learning the e-file. You don't need to crank it right up. Five, six, somewhere in there. Okay, so we're gonna turn it sideways. So you can see there's no apex. We don't have to take away too much apex, but we definitely wanna take away the weight that's on the end. We just wanna get rid of that. Got to get rid of that extra bulk on the end and on the sides. Now I am going to go on to this part of the nail. Remember I said it's kind of discolored? We are going to bring that quite a bit down because I want to put a new color on top and I want it to look more even. Now I'm going over top of the whole nail and bringing the whole nail down quite evenly across the top and taking away all that bulk on the free edge. So it sort of looks like I'm just going over top of the whole nail. Essentially I am, but I'm really focusing on the free edge onward where it was quite thick. I'm gonna bring that right down. I mean, another way you could do it is literally take off the whole thing, reform it, and try your efforts again. But if you do it this way, you sort of readjust, you're sculpting. You're actually removing the icky parts that you don't like and refilling it with new parts that you do like. The end result will be better than the last one you did because every single time you do it, you're going to learn what you're looking for to do. I mean, essentially, that is the essence of the beauty of failing. <laughs> You've got to do it. You've got, you know how many nails I failed at? My goodness. 
You have to do that in order to get to the point where you're learning. Very, very crucial part of the learning process. Fail, fail, fail. Okay, and I'm just taking away the bulk in here. Getting quite thin now. Okay, so we're really getting down to it now. Sometimes when I do a nail fill, I take away quite a bit of it, especially if they're changing color. In this situation, we're not. But I'm gonna just dig a little here. There looks like a little patchy area. I'm just gonna dig down and see what that's all about. I can't remember exactly what was on there before we put the nail on. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now, whenever I do a nail, I never prep the nail with one of those bits. I always prep the nail with a sanding bit and I usually pick a medium or a fine sanding band. This is what they look like. I'm gonna pop it onto a mandrel. And I just pop one of these guys, which is a medium or a fine. It's friction fitted. The green ones are coarse. We'll just get rid of those right now. And this sanding band preps the nail, the fake part and the real part, the natural nail and the fake nail. It preps it perfectly for putting on the fake nail that you're going to put on. Put it on low speed because now I'm really getting down to natural nail. So I'm going around the cuticle ever so gently. So I want to, because I'm going around the cuticle ever so gently on the natural nail, you want to use a nice gentle sanding bit. You want it just to rough it up enough, take away the shine, to prepare it for the new nail to stick. So actually, Caraman, you did pretty good. The only part that was really lifted was just this one side. Right. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. And then see how we've taken away we got a slight bit of a natural apex going on now and we just took the weight off the end of your nail. But you did pretty good. Even the shape, I mean, you were going for an almond and you actually did it pretty good. Just gonna buff this one side up. Still a little lifted in there and the sanding bit can really get in there and just fine tune it right up. Okay. So let's dust that off. Okay, so you wanna get rid of all the dust and then you wanna put your bridge or whatever bonder your product line that you're using offers or you know suggests. And my particular bonder is called Bridge and you sort of swirl it on a very thin layer. Don't want to oversaturate. I sort of put it on in circles, sort of massage it in. This is a great bonder to adhere when you're crossing products as well. And you can even put it under when you're doing gel polish. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a nuke. Oh, while we're waiting, I've got to show you. Look at that beautiful color. Nice. Isn't that gorgeous? Mm -hmm. It's got several colors in it. This is not a sponsored video, but, but it's Hollow Talk. I just wanted to show you because she sent it to me. And it's this color here. Isn't that something? It's got facets of green in it, like very, very slight, like the ocean. Beautiful color. I'm actually in love with it. There's quite a few beautiful colors in there. Okay, so now I'm all cured. Okay, so we're gonna get our hip gel brush. And pink. Yeah, I was gonna put um, different colors on, but I think we'll do the pink to show because it's it, we've pretty much taken it down. And like I say, that's what you do for fill sometimes. You take it down quite a bit. Now in this case, we were able to leave the free edge because none of it's having any issue whatsoever. And you can see how smooth it is. And I'm gonna turn it sideways. We've got the coat of bridge on there ready for the new product, but you can see it's got a natural arch. So we're gonna follow that. Okay, let's just take a little bit and let's just focus on the cuticle, the apex, and the free edge all in separate so we can see them specifically. Okay, so we're just gonna apply this bead right there and that's gonna allow us to focus on the cuticle area. 
Now with my hybrid gel, you can move it around with alcohol. So now we are doing the cuticle. One of the hardest, honestly, this is one of the hardest areas on the nail to master. You can get the apex and you'll get the free edge and maybe even the shape and even the finishing, but the cuticle is always something that you're gonna have trouble with until you really master it. And the reason, because it's hard. And the reason why it's hard is because you're bringing it into a fine, fine edge up to a cuticle. So when you bring it in, it's so close. You're trying to get as close as you can. And it's really hard to see if it's really smooth or not. You don't know it's smooth or how it is until it grows out. And then two or three weeks later, you're like, ah, that's what it looked like when it was butted up against the cuticle. I couldn't see when it was so close. So what we're gonna do is just wet that brush, but not don't have it dripping wet. And we're going to press the product and we're gonna press it thinner and thinner as we press it into the cuticle area. I'm pressing it up to it. See that? I'm pressing it as close as I can get it, but I'm also getting my brush in between the cuticle and the product, sort of like a buffer, like um, I'm stopping it from going any further into the cuticle. I'm also angling my brush. I'm not just patting, patting, patting. I'm actually angling my brush so when I go down into it, it's actually hugging the cuticle area of my natural nail and pressing the product in. Okay, so I'm not touching that cuticle, but I'm getting as close as I can with a gentle nudging, a gentle push, you might say. Now, I just wanted to focus on the cuticle area, so I'm going to push that back up into it so I can stay in that area for you. So you see this little part that might look a little sketchy? Just take your brush and angle it so it's actually hugging it. So you're just gentle. Oh, I need a little more alcohol. I'm going to get some alcohol, but I'm going to dab it onto the pad to release. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to... This is the problem that Caraman had when he was doing the sides. He was being flat and pushing it out, like taking the ball and pushing it so it was going into the cuticle. Totally normal. We all do that. So in this stage, though, instead of just going flat and pushing it out to the cuticle, I'm angling my brush, right? So when I push it out to the cuticle a little bit, I'm also stopping it from going to that thick layer. Okay, and then I'm going to take that free edge and I'm just going to soften it a little because we're going to put another bead down there. I'm just going to feather it off into the space. Now let's turn it sideways. Do you remember how much flatter it looked? So now I've got a nice cuticle bead in there. I've just, just ready to go up into the apex, which is what we're going to apply next. And you're able to see going into the apex, right? So let's just turn it over. Check those cuticles. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And the beauty of this stuff is it doesn't go anywhere until you're ready to tell it to stop going anywhere. <laughs> this just holds it in spot. You can do a bit of a flash cure or you can do a full cure. Then I'm going to add the apex in white so we can really see the difference. Okay, let's get the white. Are you learning anything, Caraman? Are you paying attention? Huh? <laughs> you you know, me? when you do, we're gonna test you. You're gonna do another oh, nail. Yeah, I know. You don't wanna? You don't wanna? Oh, all right. No. This is why I thought I'd share what he did with you because I knew he wouldn't really He's too worried about the lighting right now and the camera angles and getting nice and close because we do want to get close, don't we? Okay, now I'm going to use white so you can see the difference because if I use pink, it's going to blend in and you're not going to know where it stopped and started. So where's that bead going? So we are just focusing on the apex right now. So let's gather a bead, the apex bead. And we're going to place that bead right there. See that? Now 
let's take a look at it sideways. See that bead being right there? It's perfect. It's just where we want it. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of alcohol on there and we're going to press it down, but we're not gonna press it flat. We're just gonna press it into it a little bit. I'm, oh my goodness, how can I express how gently I'm pressing? As a matter of fact, Karen, when you said you were doing it, you couldn't even feel. <laughs> well, I couldn't, yeah. Yeah, it's so gentle. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm taking my bead all the way to the sides. But again, I'm not gonna go and take that ball and go and we have a rough thick edge. I'm gonna take my brush and sort of flatten it all the way around. So we have a nice thinner edge. And what that looks like is this. So it looks like I'm just going flat, 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 but I'm actually turning it on an angle and going flat, flat, flat. Then I'm turning my brush a bit on an angle and making sure we don't have that thick extension on the side that Karaman was able to get. And again, that is a very common issue. Do not be hard on yourself with this stuff. Now I wanna keep this in the apex area. So I'm gonna push that product up in there cause I wanna keep it into an apex here. Now, what is the apex? The apex is that area from about here to about here that we wanna keep higher. And the reason being is if a nail is going to break, that's the stress area and that's where it's going to break. Let me do this. See that we've got the cuticle area now sliding nice into the apex and now we got to do the free edge. That looks good. So what I can do just, I mean, I don't have to do this, but I can just sort of smooth out the transition between that white bead for the apex into the cuticle bead I can do this with the hand file, but I'm also gonna to try to do it with my brush. And I'm gonna check that side, make sure it's not overlapping. It was kind of going over a little bit too much. That is a hard side. You'll have a hard side, <laughs> which if you're right-handed, when you're doing a client, if you're right-handed, the right-hand side is always something that you're really on top of. But the left-hand side is something that's harder. So when I'm turning this around for you to see, the right, my right hand side now becomes my left hand side and that's harder for me to see and get at. So I've got to really pay attention when I'm doing this for the camera. So I'm just flattening that out. Now let's see, I'm gonna just cut it off there, like abrupt so we can see a definite line when I put the pink on for the free edge. This is more for learning, you wouldn't do this normally. Okay, so that was the Apex bead. If I turn it sideways, I stopped it. I mean, you normally wouldn't do that. I'd feather it off, but I'm trying to make a point about a specific area that you're trying to target. So we did the side walls and the apex all in the one bead. We paid attention so we didn't get that thick edge around the um, cuticle like Caraman did. Let's gather the free edge bead. You don't need much. You can always add if needed be. So we just want to apply that to the free edge. See, that's your free edge bead. And I'm just doing it in different colors so you can see I'm trying to focus and they're not super strong colors, but. Now the shape you did, Caraman, was not too bad at all. We were going for an almond. So we're gonna fill in and go in the free edge. No matter how lumpy and bumpy you can make it, you can always file it out. That's where the sculpting comes in. You can try to fix your mistakes in the filing. In fact, that's how I learned how to do nails. <laughs> I would just pile it all on and then sculpt it out. And then I just got better at piling it on as years went on. See, so I'm just putting it into the free edge area and that's not really an almond shape, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to plop it in there. I'm just sort of blending it nicely. Now let's take a look at it sideways. And you can see it's pretty good. It just fits right in there. And we'll get the shape more as we, doesn't matter if it's thick. We'll look at it this way. Yep, it's thick. That's okay. We're going to sculpt that all out. But we've got new stuff in there. Remember we took off the jacket and we put a new one on. So we're not extra bulky. That's really important.
Okay, we're just going to nuke it and now we're going to sculpt it. It's not going to take too much because we thinned it out quite nicely. So I just want to show you this. Good cuticle starts with good cuticle application, but it takes a bit to get there. You've got to make your mistakes in, in order to understand why you want to do this. <laughs> you want to get nice and close on this. You can see how smooth the cuticle is. You could almost leave it. That's how smooth it is. But you see there's quite a cuticle separation. I just want to clarify, you're better to leave a small area in between, like this is pretty close, but you're better to leave a gap than to go so close you're going to touch the skin or a little bit over. So right here I have really good cuticle separation. So if you look, the product goes down into the cuticle. It's not the same level as the cuticle. So you can see a real strong cuticle separation, right? Okay, so we're going to focus on the shape and then we're going to thin them out. Caraman, you were going for an almond shape, if I remember correctly. Is that right? I remember? tried to do that, yeah. You actually didn't do too bad at all. You're within the almond. You just got to tweak it just a little bit, actually. Not much at all before you actually get a true almond. It's pretty good. Almonds are hard to do. So you kind of did that all right. Really? Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is just work on my free edge and sort of find that almond shape. That's what I'm going to do first. So I find that almond shape. And I quite honestly have to look at it this way so I make sure, oh yeah. I mean, this is still the nail that I'm working on that you did. I didn't reform it, right? So I'm just going underneath a little bit to make it nice and smooth. And I'm just checking the sides to make sure it's nice and straight before I come in to do my point for my almond. I just have to look at it this way because if I don't, then I'm not gonna be able to show you anything <laughs> because I'm not gonna get it right. So I just wanna find my shape first, the outside shape, and then we can work on the inside and underneath stuff. Okay, so I've got the shape that I want, but now we can look at it. See, look at this. see that but it's too thick on top and it's too thick underneath and that's all normal but you can see we've got a much nicer apex to deal with here but the sides are a little bit thick so everything's just a little bit high we just need to bring it down and bring it down to the sides so I'm going to just take this side and I'm going to taper it I'm sort of beveling it you might say on that very edge can you see that see where the whiteness is that's where I'm filing in. So I'm not filing the very, very edge. I've already got that shape. I'm just gonna file it in this way, and I'm gonna file this side. See that side now? Yeah, that looks good. See those two sides? Oh, you can really see it when I take the dust away. See how that I'm doing that there? I'm just taking those sides right down. I'm going to give you the, see how nice that looks now, how much thinner that looks. You could sort of say, Caraman, you had the bones, <laughs> had good bones, right? Okay, so I'm just going to go over the whole thing now and just give it a nice smooth, I don't have to go too close to that cuticle at all. It's looking pretty good in there. And you can do this all by hand. You don't need to get an electric file. You can do it all by hand if you're comfortable. Okay, so let's use the e-file because there's one area you can't do by hand, which is underneath. So when you're first learning how to do the e-file, just work it on a low speed. Don't be intimidated, don't do it fast. So all I'm doing is taking my trimmer bit and I'm just going to file it a little bit thinner, just that little bulk that's under there. It's not too much, actually. I'm going to take it right to the free edge. If you're not comfortable with this, start really slow. Practice a lot, especially on yourself, before you start working on people, of course. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. 
So it didn't take much, you can see, just a few scoops. Now I'm gonna take my fine file and go underneath it like that to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Okay, and I'm gonna take my fine file and go near the cuticle and just make sure it's nice and even and smooth. Now I'm happy with my shape. Let's turn it sideways now, make sure we've got a good apex going. That looks great. Just gonna smooth it out all over. Look at that, that looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to look down the barrel of it this way and make sure that it's nice and even and it's looking pretty good. Do your little touch-ups if you need to. And then you wanna take a sanding sponge and go over top of the whole thing. The other option is you can take your um, sanding bit, like the arbor band, and go over it in a medium or a fine and go over the whole thing, or you can do this. There we go. So I'm gonna treat this like a natural. I'm gonna put nail polish on it. So I'm gonna take my smooth and shine and I'm just gonna file it up nice and smooth. to get it ready for polish application. Okay. okay, so once you get that nice and smooth, then you wanna put some oil on it, because again, this is gonna be for nail polish, and we're gonna massage that oil in. All around, under, in the cuticles. And then you can have the client wash the hands and then we're gonna put some nail polish on. Now, because I did it in a couple of colors, I wanna show you what it looks like with it. We have polish on it, how it does look like one and it's very, very smooth. Because sometimes when you're looking at it with different colors on it, it can look like it might be up and down. I wanna focus on the cuticle area. Look how smooth those cuticles are. No sticking out. Man, that's a beautiful color. Okay, so look how smooth and even that is. Let's take a look at side with some color on it. You can really see it a lot better against the white. You got a nice smooth cuticle here. You got a slight apex, because it's not a really long nail, so you don't have to go too high in the apex. And you got a nice curve down when it comes down to the free edge. While we're waiting, I forgot to mention, I have new pouches. These are little refill pouches, and they're sold separately now by Susie's Clean Acrylic and Fast Set. You can get them, these great little reusable pouches, and then you can pour them in. And also my coffin, long, coffin long. That'll take the effort out of shaping them really quick. Okay, let's do the second coat, and then I can show you, we'll look down on the barrel, so we can see exactly the thickness and compare it to the beginner nail. Wow, that color just speaks to me. So I don't want to touch it because it's wet, but you can see now the polish really shows you how thick and it isn't and how thick it is in certain spots, right? But you can really see the depth now and you can see the free edge is very, very nice and thin. This is what you're looking for. And look at underneath, nice and smooth. Look at that, and then let's go to the sideways. Look at that, that's fantastic. Let's compare the before and after. Now we have to remember this is a first try and it's pretty good. It's missing the apex and the free edge is too thick. By adding polish, it helps us see how shifting the weight makes such a huge difference. And here we can really see how we've defined the shape. So you can see it takes a few steps. I mean, it's just, just one nail. And of course it takes longer because I'm educating you and we're breaking it down. But did you learn something, Karen? Did you see the difference? Oh yeah, that's way better. Yeah, but then, you know, that's just takes time. If you keep practicing, Caraman, you'll get it. Oh, well, uh, I guess I got something to do this weekend. <laughs> you won't get it in a weekend. <laughs> Remember, fail, 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 fail. Every single time you're failing on it, you're just a little step closer and a little step closer. 
Sometimes you don't learn anything you want to, but you just don't. So write those days off and that's okay. You just keep trying and you will get it. So if you actually missed that video, the cameraman did this nail, and actually cameraman, you did a pretty good job. Okay. We're just taking it one step further and just getting closer and closer and closer to the goals that you're looking for. But if you want to catch me doing it, it's actually quite cute. Take a look.